What's up? Today I will be ranking every World War II Zombies map. I will cover the 5 base maps and the 4 survival maps. I always played this mode back in the days and I made a lot of videos about it. But I never told you my ranking of the maps. So here we are. So the worst map is going to be Bordage Cervantes, one of DLC 3's survival maps. I think this one is the worst. It's really big and has open space. I'll give you that, but to unlock Pack-a-Punch for the Wonder Weapons, you have to shoot some ducks and that can be quite annoying if you play solo. Other than that, you get your normal zombies, pest zombies and whistling zombies, and also the flamethrower guy. Next we have the USS Mount Olympus, another survival map for DLC 3. It's the second smallest map in the game and the ship is really tight, so therefore the map doesn't have any whistling zombies. This makes it really balanced and you can still do a hidden easter egg to upgrade your tesla guns, just like in all the other tortured path survival maps. I will say that I like the moving ship mechanic. It adds an extra layer of difficulty to the map if a car crashes you or cuts off your way. At number 7 we have the last survival map from DLC 3, Altar of Blood. Yes, I know, you can see a trend here, so I will say it to be clear. I like survival maps not as much as fully fledged out maps with main quests. See, a fully fledged out map can always be a survival map if you play it in a certain way, but not the other way around. But that's just me. Anyways, Altar of Blood gets a higher spot because it's possible to get Barbarossa's sword on this map. And this thing is beyond powerful, might actually be the best melee weapon in the game. Yes, you can also get it on the tortured path, but you can only use it for like one or two rounds, so that's not really enough time to enjoy slicing up some zombies on a Friday afternoon. But World War II's zombie types really balance melee weapons. By having to deal with bomber zombies and whistling zombies, it gets always risky to use them. Still, it's easier to get to round 100 on this survival map than on the others, just because of this sword. Next we have Größten House. It's also called the Prologue map. Although there's a difference, but still kinda the same map. So this map and I have a long history. It was the very first zombies map that I covered on this channel. And I made a few guides for some of the character challenges on this map. I also made a trophy guide on the prologue mission. And needless to say, but this map will always have a special place in my heart. But I digress. The map is by far the smallest survival map in the game. Maybe ever in any Call of Duty Zombies map, but that's the challenge, you know, surviving on this small map. Now you can get the box and pecker punched weapons, so there's that, but to even get to round 50 is more difficult than some of the easter eggs in my opinion. Now we have our number 5 spot, and it's the first real map with a main quest. Well, kinda. It's the tortured path. And yes, it should be called the Tortured Path Experience because there are three maps, not one. And basically, if you want to do the easter egg, you have to complete three separate easter eggs in order without leaving your lobby. It can be done solo in a private game, but honestly this was really confusing back in the days. No one knew what to do. The thing is, not only do you have to do the three quests in order, you also can't mess up. You forget one step or do something too late and it's game over for the run. It's all about efficiency and endurance and therefore the hardest easter egg on World War II Zombies. But that's just the quest part, how about the gameplay and layout, stuff like that? Well, the tortured path is not your ordinary map. It's objective based, which was a nice fresh take on a zombies mode. I'm still giving them credit for that and I like the objectives for the most part. Back when it released though, I despised the tortured path, but with time going by, I actually liked it more. It's still my least favorite from the main maps, but it's not bad at all. I personally would have liked, and that's still my biggest complaint to this day, um, I would have liked if they added new stuff. I hated to see the Meuchler zombies and Sizzler zombies on the map. I'm a fan of map exclusivity and seeing the same zombies again felt not right. The same goes for reused Tesla guns and Ripsaw, or the upgraded melee weapons from DLC 2. Overall it was just too much reused in my opinion. The story however was great, it was the first time we actually had to play as someone else than the main characters. At least in the first two maps of the tortured path. But 
This map was truly the biggest in terms of world building, with the Barrow characters and all of that. It was interesting. At number 4 we have The Darkest Shore, DLC 1, the foggy island map. I like the smart boss zombie and atmosphere. It really felt as if you were trapped on this island and being haunted. I also liked the quest and although there was no new boss fight in the end, it was still great facing the elemental Meuchler zombies. The story went deeper with the whole nervous mythology and we got the pommel for Barbarossa's sword. The minecart system is one of the best transportation systems in all of zombies and we got a sick one weapon, the ripsaw. But apart from that, there wasn't really anything else, unfortunately. And that's my biggest complaint for the map. Not a lot to do apart from the quest. Great atmosphere, but a bit empty. Next we have the Frozen Dawn. The final map for World War II zombies and maybe ever. Because I don't see them continuing the story at this point with Black Ops 5 releasing this year. But anyways, we face this time a lost ancient city and the God King bad guy. To defeat him we got the good old 4 Wonder Weapons map. That's always a plus in my book, if there are 4 different elemental Wonder Weapons on a zombies map. But this time they were not different elements, they were completely different. And they were melee weapons. That was a huge step in the right direction in terms of replayability. The atmosphere was great again, the lost city was cool and you could even jump off the edge and brutally die. The boss fight, if faced without godlike strategies, was actually really challenging. He had some strong clever attacks that could insta kill you if you didn't pay attention. And although the story ended on a cliffhanger, it's still a great final map in my opinion. At number 2 we have the Shattered Throne, DLC 2. The setting was just great. Berlin got attacked by an army of zombies and Dr. Straub was in control in his zeppelin above the map. The quest was to build 3 melee mono weapons to open a big door to get somehow the blade of Barbarossa and at the same time to lower the zeppelin. Yeah, not quite the best quest from a that makes sense perspective, but still fun. But why is it on my number 2 spot? Honestly, I don't know. I combine just good memories with it. I really like the whole story part with Dr. Strop getting killed and the final boss fight in the Zeppelin. I also like the free melee quests and the movie letters side easter egg. But I hated the Sizzler zombies. They were really annoying because they could outrun you and bite you in the ass. The map also had some unique and fun character challenges, so there was that. And my favorite map in World War II Zombies is the Final Reich. The map that started it all. Well, it was the launch map, it had a casual and hardcore easter egg, a sick sword melee weapon, 4 elemental tesla guns, the best atmosphere and a great zombies variety. At first you had to learn how this iteration of zombies works and this map was a great teacher, making pack a punch easy to access and telling you what to do with the notebook in your inventory. The most new player friendly map in all of Call of Duty Zombies and a really easy and doable casual main quest to try out some easter eggs if you are new. But also challenging for hardcore players by rewarding them with gameplay challenges and not puzzle solving steps like in DLC 2 or DLC 4. The design of the boss zombie, hell, the design of every zombie was scary at first. The different areas in the bunker were pure horror and that was exactly what they were going for with the mode and you either love it or hate it. The Final Reich is truly one of the best maps we have in Call of Duty Zombies. At least in my opinion. But I wanna hear your maps too. Tell me your favorite maps from World War II Zombies. Thanks for watching and I see you next time.